Good afternoon, Tampa Bay. My name is Tom DuPont. I'm the publisher of the DuPont Registry Tampa Bay. We're here at the World International Headquarters of the DuPont Registry Tampa Bay, right across the street from the St. Pete, St. Pete International Airport. Thanks for joining us today. We have a special guest today, a well-known uh, uh, person around the community and around the country and all throughout the world of football. Mike Allstott, welcome today. Glad to have you here. Um, thank you for having me. Appreciate you taking the time. You're probably busy answering questions about the Super Bowl. And we're not going to talk about it too much because we don't want to jinx anybody. Right. <laughs> no, they're, uh, they're playing well. They put, they, them, they put themselves in a great situation, and now they just got to finish it. I know, and isn't one of the real tricks that you just don't even know the answer to when you start is stay healthy? Keep your team healthy through the whole season so you don't lose a, a link in the chain. Well, that's that's the one thing we don't talk about. Yeah. You know I what I mean? We so just, uh, you just that's just a uh, and, that's an unknown rule. And the Bucks have been pretty healthy. Yeah, no, they've, they've, they've uh, yeah, knock on wood. Um, I think the, a lot of the things is just fighting the, the COVID situation sure. right now. That's, that's probably worse than all the injuries that's taken place in the league this year. You know, one of the bright spots of COVID, I think, uh, number one, if there are bright spots too, is number one, I think we're all a little healthier because we're minding what we're eating and where we're going and paying attention and getting some rest and trying to be healthier. Uh, I think it's working, man. I know I have. Yeah. You know, uh, the vitamins and everything you're putting in your body, seeing where you're going and, you know, washing your hands and doing all that stuff. It's it, it's really, you know, the conscience of... You know, the flu bug is down. The regular flu is way down because nobody's going to the office and coughing and sneezing on each other. Well, yeah, so there, there's there's going to be new trends. There's no question about yeah. it after uh, what we experienced in 2020 and yeah. in the business world and, and everybody's lives and stuff like that. But it would be nice to get back to a little bit more, a better reality. Oh, absolutely. If we, if, if I'll, I'll take all the benefits of COVID, throw them out the window if we don't have to have the problems. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, Mike, grew up in Illinois, played football in high school. Successful career, I assume. Did you win a championship there or anything or just play good, solid football? No, I um, – so I grew up in uh, Juliet, Illinois, uh, south suburb of Chicago, and and um, went to Juliet Catholic. And, um, yeah, we won a state championship. We, uh, in my career, I think we um, went 28-1, and one, and wow. that one was my last uh, semifinal game my senior year. And <laughs> and uh, so we almost had, a you know, a perfect, uh, you know, junior-senior season. Wow. And, uh, you know, it, it was it was unbelievable. You know, it really was. Uh, and from there to Purdue, I think a lot of people know this already, but we're going to skip over some of the high points here with uh, then to Purdue, right? Yeah, I went to Purdue. Um, was very fortunate uh, and blessed um, to live my dream and continue uh, my football career in in in, uh, in, yeah. in the collegiate level and got a scholarship to Purdue. And I uh, had, you know, again, um, wasn't as successful as the win-loss column there, but um, I met a lot of great people, got to play football at, at, at the highest level and the collegiate level and, and, and be able to expand my dreams into the next level. Yeah, well, and is that where A-Train started? It, it was, since, you know, Boilermakers and yep. our mascot was the train and stuff like that. So that's where, that's where it all started. Well, I remember it well. I'm, I, I did go to uh, the first Super Bowl in Tampa in the, in the big sombrero. Nice. What a stadium that was. You know, they gave it, I got seats um, two rows from the top. Is that the wide right one? Um, all the way up underneath the uh, on the west on the on the east side underneath the overhanging skyboxes. Yeah, no, but you went to the Super Bowl that was wide right. Um, C Cincinnati and uh, oh yeah, I think it was Buffalo. Or... All I remember is being so, up so high that I was scared. I can't recall <laughs> well, when it when it. Oh, Giants! It was Giants and Buffalo. Giant, yeah, right. right? Yeah, yeah. So when it, we're sitting in that top row, I don't like heights, man. You were in that old stadium. You were miles away from the field. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh it was a cool stadium. I got I, you know I was fortunate there to play uh 2 years. So I, I came in in 96 and was fortunate to play in in the orange and white, right? And uh the experience that and and then um then we transferred into the the pewter but we still played um that 98 season 97 season in uh in, in the old sombrero, and then we transferred to uh, in the '98 team to Raymond James. Yeah, RJ, what a great stadium! I, I imagine the locker rooms and everything were a big improvement over the old one. <laughs> uh, not really, not really. not really. Um, <laughs> they're not as good as they are now. Uh, we sure. there was always a 
uh, you know, we got in there pretty fast. And I think um, when we got in there, they didn't have the opportunity to build the, the locker rooms that they have now in there. So we kind of actually had a, a smaller locker room than, uh, than we did at uh, the old Saburo. So. Really? But we all it, did, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? It really doesn't matter. It's how – it's it, it's the size of the football field. And remember and the uh, the trailer park headquarters and the oh, practice field over yeah. at, the, at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Those were great days. Yeah. Yep. So those were great days. So you got to – you got to – play for two of the most unbelievable coaches in the history of football, uh, Dungey and Gruden. Pretty extraordinary, but very different? Uh, say the least. <laughs> yeah, very, very different. Uh, both great-minded um, football, you know, geniuses. Um, and, you know, they just had their different their, their different ways of doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, Tony was very grounded and um, – and uh, Gruden was very excited, so um, in a lot of ways, but uh, very well respected. Got the job done, you know. And, and sure they did. were they were mentors on and off the field for us. Yeah, and mentors in the community. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. So you had you had to play with some really great players for the Bucks too. Uh, Warwick Dunn and Rondé Barber. Um, there must have been somebody in your career at the Bucks who was under the radar. Nobody ever called him a the key guy or something like that. There were one or two guys that were always there for you, but they were never Hall of Famers or first choice or anything. They might be some just grunted out work every day, never give up guy. Um, you know, um, probably on the defense side of the ball, I would say uh, Shelton Corals is probably a guy that sure. that, that, that really uh, that sticks out in my mind. Um, played, gee whiz, right next to Derek Brooks for how many years, you know, made the – transition um you know from college to going to the canadian football league for three or four years really did really well got picked up as a as a special teams guy to come on us and then he earned her spot to play right next to derek and and, and another another guy l singleton you know comes to mind um you know guys that are just grinders that, that that made a great great living in the nfl and uh um but you know Showed took up. full advantage of it. Yeah, and showed up every day. Oh, every day. No, just yeah. you know, you know, and that that was that was the blessing that we had with our team. We were we were we were all team team guys. There was nothing me and us. Even even the guys you talk about, Hall of Famers and all that stuff. We 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 were all team. Um, what, how are we gonna change this? How are we gonna change that? How are we gonna get over this hump? And how are we gonna you know get over the losing to Philadelphia for so many years and be able to get to that uh, big dance? Yeah, we well, got to the big dance. Yeah, two thousand and three, two thousand two season, two thousand three Super Bowl. Yes, two thousand three Super Bowl. Did you bring the ring? No, I don't. No, <laughs> it's in the it's in the uh, safe right now. It's in the safe. Yeah, Good yeah. place for it. Yeah. Good place for it. So uh, we're all done playing football. You had an unfortunate injury, injury, but under control. No longer no long effects. So you just you look healthy. <laughs> yeah. No, I I, I deal. With, I I have um, so um, in 03, uh Right after, obviously, our, our Super Bowl, uh, about the third or fourth game, I uh, had a neck injury, and uh, had it, and then I was on IR, and I had to have surgery, had had a, um, a fusion, and then came back and played 04, 05, 06, and then going into the training camp in 07, um, I heard I uh, herniated at another level, so that made Ouch. me retire. Um, and then I just actually had surgery um, this past June, and had a artificial disc put in. And uh, so you know, you know, there's always you know that's 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 what our business is. You know, I mean, you are gonna uh, feel the effects after we're done, and sure. have to continue with the, the maintenance and and doing stuff. But you know, just trying to eat right, like you were saying, we, we were talking earlier with this COVID thing. You know. Um, eat right, do the do right things, and trying to make my body feel better in, in a lot of different ways. That's a good a good uh, um, procedure to follow is to is to not go overboard on the eating and, and stay healthy and keep keep fit. And uh, for goodness' sake, get it. We're we're blessed in this community. You can get outside in the fresh air and exercise. No question. That's I mean, not I, happening I, in Green Bay <laughs> right now. I, yeah, I, I grew up up north, so <laughs> I am. Uh, when I got that call to come down to Tampa and fortunate to play twelve years and stay in my career. In the Tampa community, with these uh, this this awesome community, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm very blessed. I love the winners. So um, here you played, for, yeah, <laughs> you played football, and then you decided to stay in Tampa when you retired. 
Yeah, no, this is this is home. Um, my family's from here. My kids reside here. You know, everything. You know, they. You know, this is this is where. You know, again, I love I love the Midwest. I love the people there. I love Chicago. You know, all about it. But again, when you make that transition from college and you know before you even graduate, I'm, I'm living here. And um, you know, this has been home for. 25 plus years. So, so you're stuck with uh, Tampa as home and you stuck with football as uh, as a place to, to work. So you're you're coaching now. Yeah, yeah. So I've been uh, just finished my ninth year as a head coach. Um, I coached two years at rec football and I coached another year at a high school. Um, and, you know, I never thought I'd be a, a head coach of a high school. Never. I didn't even want to be. You know what I mean? Didn't want to deal with everything. But um, you know, I'm at a great school, Northside Christian. Um, they allow me to do what I want, you know, in, in as far as coaching the kids and mentoring the kids and doing all the things with our, with our team. And, and it's a great fit. It's a great relationship. And, and I love it. And I have great people around me each and every day. So if you're into seven, nine seasons, you have to have somebody who's going on to college and then uh, would end up in the pros by now. You got anybody in the pros from Northside Christian? Uh, no. Um, I got kids that, you know, my son went to Purdue, went played at Western Michigan. I have kids that went to Indiana, Notre Dame. I have kids that went to smaller colleges and played, but nobody, nobody in the pros. So besides uh, playing football and now coaching football, 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 what else does Mike Allstott do? You got a foundation. Yeah, out. no, we do a lot in the community with the Mike Allstadt Family Foundation, um, you know, which keeps us busy uh, every month. You know, we have different programs each and every month that we've been doing for years and growing our relationships with with these programs that we've uh, that we have established. Um, so we, we're, we're a little bit we're a little bit different. We we partner up with uh, charitable organizations and we, we come up with a program and most of them are kids related programs mm -hmm. um big brothers big sisters the all children's hospital we do a lot of stuff with uh sally house we do a lot of stuff with um uh, orphanage kids you know and, and we do a lot of a lot of different things so we'll create a program and but the beautiful thing is uh my family and i were a part of that we we go to the event we interact with the kids we want to be personal we want to get to meet them we want to build a relationship with these kids and these families and be able to mentor them and put smiles on their faces it's so important now to reach out to kids in the community and and, and lend a hand um, yeah uh, to whatever their career is or their education is or their community is and just give them that extra boost i mean you and i are very fortunate we've had fortunate lives where uh, we've had a, a lot of time to be able to spend somewhere, and when you choose to spend it with others who need help, uh, that's a gift from God. Uh, it's important. Uh, very much so. And, you know, I've been blessed, and you've been blessed. We've been blessed. And we'll be able to be able to still give back, and, and it doesn't have to be monetary. It, it just can be just, you know what, hanging out. You, you know, know, the important talking. part is it's not just money. Right. It's, it's money and it's time. It, it, and time is more val valuable than money. Exactly. You go from practicing football. And then building the around. relationships and then just, you know, a normal conversation with a kid and then asking him about his life and giving him attention, you know, and all that stuff is, is uh, what I've really um, enjoyed about our foundation and, and meeting people and, and trying to help and in some sort of way. It might be just a short conversation and I might have said something that might have inspired. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but again, um, just trying trying to help in whatever way. And um, But again, I really we well, really enjoy it. The community appreciates your leadership and your philanthropy Thank and you. your, your interest in helping the, the people who are, need a, an extra hand. So you got football, you got the uh, foundation, you got coaching. Uh, so what do you do in your spare time? You got any any hobbies we need to know about? Cars, um, fishing. I, you know, I go, I go fishing, go boating. You know, um, very little golf. Uh, you know, <laughs> um, but just you know, just hanging. You know, with my kids. My kids are at an age right now, um, twenty one, eighteen, and seventeen, where um, they're in they're in their you know movements transitions in life you know what i mean and you understand sure. that right yep, yep. you know my son you know four years ago he was doing a transition to college and um and now he's coming out of college and now my my middle daughter is going to college and and then my 
And then my uh, youngest is going to be graduating in, you know, uh, a year. So it's those transitions that sure. uh, we're dealing with and being part of, but part of our kids' lives is, um, is, is what I am really enjoying a lot right now. Sure. Of course. Of course. Now, so if you do some boating, if, have you gone by Brady's house and, and, and checked it out from the water? No, we're, 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 on, we're on the Pinellas side. We don't go, we don't flip over to the Hillsboro too much, you know right. what I mean? But, uh, um, but we just, <laughs> yeah, we just hang out. We just go to the boats, go to the little islands, hang out, you know, get out and, yeah. you know, and, uh, um, and enjoy each other's company and, and, and do stuff like that. I'm a boat guy too. So yeah. if the weather's nice, we're on the boat someplace. Yeah, right? Yeah. And, uh, I just got a 23 little boat. We'll pull up a spoiler island and yeah. anchor up and get out and, and, and sit on the sand. And uh, So know. we need to talk Super Bowl here. Well, let's start first off with that. Are you familiar with uh, Forever 55, the charitable organization part of the Super Bowl? Yeah. A um, friend of ours is instrumental in running it. We had her on for an interview, Claire. Uh, Lessinger, she's terrific. She's part of the sports commission as a title and a lot of responsibilities. But they, basically, she's the functional uh, operator of Forever Fifty Five in this charity that two million dollars raised by the NFL and local community, and then split up into micro grants as well as a couple of big ones. But the micro grants are going to small uh, foundations and charitable enterprises to take care of little specific needs that plant a seed forever. 55. They're starting things, and it's so important that that part of the story of the NFL and the Super Bowl and the community get told, and they're doing an extraordinary job at it. So was, was that kind of charitable activity a, a part of Super Bowl back when in 2003? I would not. You and would and, know, and I, I'm assuming, and I'm assuming, <laughs> again, we're talking – uh, 17 years ago, you know what I mean? But and I'm sure it's yeah, your focus was on the field. So yeah, no, it was like, hey, uh, hit the hole, right? Well, I know this is a Block terrific initiative, <laughs> and uh, I know it's going to be uh, have an impact in Tampa. And then the on the colorful end of it is Yacht Village. You know what that is this year? Mm -mm. They've nope. got a, 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 a flotation dock system uh, by the convention center uh, right there where um, uh, on the river walk where everything's going to be converted over for the central entertainment area. Uh, and they started Yacht Village, and you can bring your boat. <laughs> it does cost a fee to bring your boat there, and they're looking for anything from Shocker. 50 to 150 feet. Uh, as sort of your little headquarters in downtown, they give you a plug to plug in, and you can spend the night. And you get parking, and everything else like that. Well, you guys, you guys are too big for my. Uh, well, it's a my little big for me, right? believe me. <laughs> but you might want to take a day trip, go over and see what's sitting there, because you know it's going to be some owner's boat, the player's boat, some big executive who's part of the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty exciting. I'm going to go. I am. I'm going to crash them. <laughs> I'm going to crash them all. Well, and you and you will be able to see the boats um, when you go down to the entertainment area there in the park that they're setting up as their command central for the for the Super Bowl. It's it just um, it, it's it, it just saddens me, you know, with our world that we live in now and how big this really this Tampa community is going to miss out on what it what it would have been you know what i mean mm -hmm. and all the planning and everything that would have that just that saddens me a little bit because of the opportunities that a lot of people would have including myself but at the same time we're talking fans we're talking experience we're talking tampa you know as far as you know what they could have really generated in in, in this outcome of you know well thank goodness we have what we have because no. it's a terrific economic engine for the community at a time when we need yeah no and i and i get it but you know a lot yeah. of people are building a lot of things to you know yeah. hotels and everything that but again it will it, it, i mean again we're, we're fortunate to be able to still have it and, and it wasn't canceled right right exactly so um super bowl bucks are right on the edge right and uh they got to go to green bay and then they're going to face whoever it is um so what are the odds you think they're good Oh yeah, no question. You know, I'm with it's you. It's any given Sunday. I mean, I believe in that, and um, I think the best, if there is, uh, you know, a, a bright side to it is they're going, they're going to Lambo, and there's not going to be no fans in there, <laughs> right? Oh, and how about they just played in the Superdome? And there were no fans there, or relatively few. Which is which is huge. That's we, the uh, noisiest place in the world, right? One Almost. of them, yeah, 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 one of them. Um, but again, it's it's you know there's no fans and so you don't have to deal with that. But again, the elements are going to be a situation that I lived through with some teams, um, 
when I was playing uh, moons ago that, you know, there are some players that don't play as well that are Southern kids and going up to the Midwest and, you know, the, fro the frozen tundra and, and be able to do that. But um, we know that Brady and Gronk are going to be fine. You know what I mean? They should be fine. Yeah. They should be fine. Although I think Brady already said his blood was getting a little thin. For no, it does. <laughs> I, 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 people, people laugh when they say that. It really does. And, oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, me, me being here a long time, and then when I was starting to go back up north because my son was playing up north and watching these games and stuff like that, and I still had Carhartt on and everything like that, and I was like, oh, man, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, it's, uh, you know, it, that's, that's, that's the elements right there, and that's called home field advantage. Sure. It'll be a tough one on Sunday for him, I'm sure, but it'd be tough no matter what the weather is in Green Bay because yeah, you're always going up against a tough opponent. I mean, there. I mean, nobody gave us probably uh, a, a chance um, against this past uh, this past Sunday against the Saints since everybody thought that they the Saints had our number though, right? And, yeah. But you know, Brady and the offense, but the defense stepped up huge, oh, huge. In, in, in a lot of ways um, in holding the running game down and coming up some huge interceptions and some turnovers that uh that's that's the name of the game turnovers yep. you create turnovers and uh we played green bay at home really well already and yeah. we we shut out green bay pretty much for the most part when um I, I can't remember the score but you know after that there was a point where all right it flipped and we and um you know, Rodgers had like three interceptions back to back to back sure. or something like that. And so um, I'm sure he's going to be geared up. But, you know, this is the NFC Championship game. And, uh, you know, it's a great it's a great spot to be in right now. There won't be many people on the golf course on Sunday afternoon. I think. No, no, We're no, all no, be no, home watching no. Yeah. <laughs> what time is that game? I don't even know. So I, I did experience one thing, and then we got to go because we're probably Just running out of time. I was watching, uh, dialed up Facebook, and I saw an inter uh, a, a clip of uh, Breeze and Brady out on the field after the game, like on the 20 yard talking. You, you see it? Mm -hmm. Do you see Breeze's son run up and toss Brady the ball and then break for the end zone, break yeah. right, and Brady threw him a, a pass and he yeah. caught it? Yeah. Boy, that's got to be a memory he's going to hold for a long time. I'm sure those kids have a lot of memories. I'm sure they do. But that's, <laughs> you know, seeing that on TV, I thought, oh, these guys are, are, are the best that sports have. Two absolute champions with great attitudes out there to chat on the field and talk about life and then take the time to toss a football to a kid. Yeah. Uh, I, there's a piece of, of America that I think will last a long time. With Drew Brees, I just, um, you know, I just hope, you know, because, you know, I know he's played a long time, 20 years. He's got his whole family ahead of him. He's got plans like this. But, you know, you just never want to second-guess yourself and give it up too early because he still has a lot in the tank. You know what I mean? Yeah. He really does. Yes, he he overcame some uh, uh, some bad injuries this year, yes, you know, did. some ribs, which is – you know, pretty uh, crucial to your throwing, you know, style and stuff like that. But, you know, it's just uh, hope he hope he reconsiders to come back in, into maybe maybe one more year and and they figure that out for him. Um, but again, because he's got the rest of his life ahead of him to to be able to be a broadcaster or whatever. And I, I understand, but you know, nowadays uh, uh, us professional athletes, we do have a a lot of time to. Um, see our family in the off season and do that stuff. You know what I mean? So, Drew, if you're watching this podcast, you got a recommendation from an authority. No, I just, I'm just saying. You just, uh, no, we you know, all encourage him. You to know, keep I know it's not about could. the money and everything like that, and it's about you know, there's there, there's a lot of factors, and each and every each and every person has to determine their own uh, situation. But it's, uh, you know, either way, once you give it, give it up, um, it's hard to come back. You got, you got that. Okay, well, thanks so much for your time today. No, thank uh, you. Folks from uh, the Tampa Bay area and beyond, we're glad to be with you today, uh, broadcasting again from the uh, headquarters of the DuPont Registry, Tampa Bay. Our pleasure to have Mike Allstott here with us, um, a, a, a football player, a football coach, a life coach, and a participant in the Tampa Bay community. We're lucky to have you here. No, thank we, you. I really appreciate, appreciate you. So to all of you out there uh, listening and watching, I only have one thing left to say to you. That's go out and make it a great day, Tampa Bay. Thanks very much.